You walk into your favorite cafe, excited to buy that fufu coffee that's been on your mind all day. As you walk up to the ordering counter, you realize that your wallet containing all 23 of your credit cards is at home. But before walking out in embarrassment, you remember that you always keep a $10 bill in your pocket for emergencies just like this one. With excitement rejuvenated, you order that iced caramel vanilla cloud crunch frappe that's been on your mind all day. Your total is $6.18, says the barista. You hand them the $10 bill that saved the day and receive your $3.82 back in change. As you look down at the change just received, you notice something strange on one of the dollar bills. A star. You think to yourself, that's odd, and wonder why there was a star on your dollar. After all, the other dollars you received don't have stars on them. These are called star notes. Star notes can be found on all seven denominations of U.S. currency. So what is a star note, and how much are they worth? When it comes to money production, we can be sure that our government executes every printing operation with 100% accuracy about 2% of the time. During the later stages of the printing process, a serial number is printed on each bill. This serial number acts as a birth certificate for each note. A serial number is broken up into three parts. The prefix letters, suffix letters, and a string of eight digits in the middle. The prefix lettering system has undergone a slight change that started in 1996 and continues now. 1995 and prior saw all bills having only one prefix and suffix letter. Today, only one ones and twos follow this pattern. For ones and twos, the prefix letter denotes which Federal Reserve Bank the money was issued from. There are only 12 Federal Reserve Banks, so there can only be one of 12 letters in this position. The 12 letters are A through L, which are the first 12 letters in the alphabet. For denominations 5 through 100, the prefix letters not only denote which Federal Reserve Bank issued the money, but also the series. The first letter in the prefix set will represent the series of the note. 1996 started with A, and every other series has caused this first letter to go down alphabetically. Today, we are on series 2021, causing the first prefix letter to be Q. The second prefix letter in this position here is the same as ones and twos, as this letter represents the Federal Reserve Bank that issues the note. These 12 Federal Reserve Banks are in charge of servicing the entire country with cash. All smaller and regional banks that have an account with the Federal Reserve can order money from the Reserve Bank that services their area. The suffix letter represents the run, or how many times, the Federal Reserve Bank has asked for money. For denominations 1s, 2s, 5s, 10s, and 20s, 96 million notes are printed per run. 50s and 100s are printed to 99,200,000 per run. The 8-digit string of numbers starts at serial number 1 and is printed to either 96 million or 99,200,000 depending on the denomination. The first run is always denoted with the letter A. Let's say the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston needs some $1 bills. The BEP will begin printing these notes. The prefix letter will be A because A represents the Boston, Massachusetts bank. The suffix letter will also be A because in this example, this is the first run that Boston has asked for. Once the BEP prints the complete run of 96 million, they will stop printing $1 bills for Boston until they ask for more. If they do ask for more, the prefix lettering will remain A as it is still Boston that has asked for the notes, but the suffix letter will now change to B, as this is the second print run for the $1 denomination for the series that Boston has requested. This process will continue, and the suffix letter will keep going down the alphabet all the way until Y. The letter O is not used because it looks similar to zero. Also, Z is reserved for test printings only, so you likely won't see that suffix on modern notes out in circulation. For denominations $5 and up, the suffix letter system follows the exact same process as denominations 1 and 2. There is always only one suffix letter. The serial numbers, as stated previously, start from serial number 1 and then run up to 96 million for 1s, 2s, 5s, 10s, and 20s, then 99 million, 200,000 for 50s and 100s. We now have a basic understanding of some of the information on our money, but we still don't know why there is a star on our bill. Well, the Mint was supposed to print a new design back in 2011, but they keep botching the bill. The first batch ended up with a blank spot, and the second round lifted by thieves on their way to the Federal Reserve. Now, excess ink. 
the BEP frequently makes mistakes during the printing process. All messed up bills have an appointment with the shredder. When they destroy the errored bills, a log is kept of which serial numbers have been done away with. When bills are destroyed, there remains a lack of currency in the run. These errored and destroyed bills can be as numerous as 16 million notes or higher. 16 million bills destroyed is a large chunk of a run. These notes will need to be reprinted. But instead of stopping the whole press, manually trying to add sheets in the correct sequence and resetting the serial number dials by hand, the BEP takes a completely different approach to this problem. For one, no two serial numbers can be the exact same, even if one was error due to bookkeeping purposes. All serial numbers need to be different with no exceptions. Enter the star. When notes are destroyed due to errors, the BEP will keep the prefix of the federal bank that was supposed to receive the errored notes and simply change the suffix to a star. Then they will print starting from serial number one and go until they have made up for the lost number of bills. Some star note runs are as large as 3.2 million and some are as few as 3,200. Sometimes large runs of 3.2 million are printed multiple times to make up for errors that encompass lots of notes. So now we know, due to the government's printing mistakes, these cool little stars are on some of our money. But wait a minute, I rarely see stars on my dollars. Are they worth anything? I'm glad you asked. Yes, they are worth something, but not all star notes are created equal. Remember how I said some runs are bigger than others? These run sizes have a direct correlation to the value of a star note. There are two types of star notes, those which come from sheets and those which come from packs. Let's talk about the differences so that you can understand which ones are more valuable. Star notes that have originated from sheets are more rare and therefore more valuable. During the printing process, bills are never printed one by one, but are actually printed in either 32 or 50 subject sheets. The best way to know if your note comes from either a 32 or 50 subject sheet is by looking at this alpha numeric set over here. If the number is the same size as the letter it is next to, then your bill comes from a 50 subject sheet. If the number is about half the size of the letter, then it comes from a 32 subject sheet. Today, most notes are printed on 50 subject sheets, which is one of the reasons why the print runs end on even numbers. As sheets are being printed and ran through the press, a computer is scanning them looking for errors. If a sheet is found to have errors before it gets to the cutting and packing process, then it is pulled off the production line and replaced with a star note sheet. These sheet star notes are much harder to find as they are randomly placed in a pack of normally printed bills. Not only this, but errored bills are found more often when they are already past the cutting process. If sheets that contain errors get through the printing process without being pulled off and replaced, they are cut and sent off to be checked. If it is identified that errors are present in the pack, then the entire strap or pack of 100 bills is set aside to be shredded and an entire new pack of 100 star notes is put in its place instead. These pack notes are much more common. Pack note runs often go up to 3.2 million and printed multiple times as seen here with the K district for 2013. The K district in 2013 saw eight pack runs of 32 million, totaling about 25 million star notes produced for that district. Pack star notes are still worth more than face value, however. At this stage in the current market, and these prices are subject to change as markets do grow and decline constantly, pack star notes are valued as follows. Again, these are rough estimations. The value of your pack star note will depend heavily on its condition. For sheet notes, the values are much more difficult to measure. The lower the run, the more valuable your note will be. Some sheet notes have sold for over $700 above face value, with room still to realize higher prices, while other sheet notes, although still scarcer than pack notes, have only realized about $8 over face value. So it really depends on the run size and what the condition of your bill is. I will link a very helpful website in the description below that will help you identify if your star note is a pack or a sheet, the rarity and the overall run size of your note. So now you know what a star note is and what it's worth. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to learn more about other notes, check out some of my other videos here.